Hi, my name is Katherine Gomes. I am the author of the Apologia series, Exploring Creation with Mathematics. And in this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of level two of the program. Now, level two is designed to be sort of a traditional second grade math, that's the level, but obviously it's up to you as the parent to choose the best level for your child. To use the program, you're gonna to need to purchase two books. The spiral bound book is the student book. It contains all the lessons, games, activities, and your child writes right in this book. Then the second book is the teaching guide. This one's for you. It has all the answers as well as notes that I wrote to you as the homeschool parent on how to most effectively teach math at this level. And we included some other resources for you in here as well. In addition to those two books, manipulatives are so important at this level. So there is gonna be some supplies you need to get in order to do the activities and to teach the lessons. What we did to make it simple for you is we put a master list of everything you need for the year in the back of the teaching guide. We also have lists just for each unit, but if you wanna get a glimpse of the whole year, it's here. You can even tear this out, that's what I did, and then take it with you shopping. It's almost all common household items, but there's a couple math-specific manipulatives you are gonna to need to purchase. And anything that I included, I really weighed, is this worth your money, is this worth your investment? And I only picked things that I really felt were worth it. So the first item are linking cubes. And if you use level one, you're gonna notice some overlap here because I also am working with sort of the same set of manipulatives as much as I can in the different levels. So you get more than one year's use out of it. Linking cubes or snap cubes, they're sometimes called, are just these blocks that fit together nicely. They come, you know, tend to a color. There are so many math ideas that you can teach with these. I love these guys. Then base 10 blocks. This is probably the most important thing at the level two um, level because we're going to be looking at a lot of regrouping, addition, subtraction. Base 10 blocks are just blocks specifically created to show the place value relationships with their size. So for instance, this is 1000 and then this is 100, this flat. So you can kind of see the relationship between those. The rod represents 10 and the littlest cube represents one. We use these a lot. I love these, they're the best. For geometry, the geometry section of the book, you're gonna need some 3D shapes. Now, you can buy a set of 3D shapes, you know, they sell those as math manipulatives, or you can look at the set that's listed, which shapes you need, and you might even have them. This is just a wooden block set that I grabbed these from, so you might even have them in another form and you won't have to purchase something. Finally, you're gonna want pattern blocks. This is our set, it came with a magnetic board, but you can also buy them just the blocks without this board. We love these guys, we use them in preschool and things like that, but they're also a great way of teaching a lot of different math concepts. All right, let's take a look inside the books. Throughout the year, you are gonna work through the student book cover to cover, and there are six units and 105 lessons. The units and chapters are grouped around a specific idea. So this would be a unit on addition and subtraction with three digit numbers. Then your first chapter will be just adding three digit numbers. The book starts out with number sense and place value. These ideas are all a review of level one. I wanted to include some review because I'm not sure what you did last year. And even if you used Apology of Math, you know, all kids forget things so this refresher is super important and also we do enrich the ideas even though they did learn it in level one we're adding a little bit more depth to it now and then once they get through this review they are going to start with addition and subtraction with two digit numbers so in this unit, I am walking them through adding and subtracting two digit numbers, regrouping. There's a lot to that. It was really fun to break this down to show the kids lots of different strategies.
Notice all the color, lots of fun activities to keep it interesting. Otherwise this can get dry pretty quickly. I love the layout because um, it just really helps kids. Like the way my designer did this really leads to effective learning. All right, now after we do all that, they do need to learn how to do these similar operations with three digit numbers, but I decided to break it up. So after the unit on two digit numbers, we take a break from that and we go to time and money. And I did that for two reasons. One, because it's kind of refreshing to do something else. I think both you and your child would be like, okay, good, something a little different. The other thing is, it's okay if they forget a little bit of their two digit addition and subtraction skills because they will relearn it and it'll be reinforced when they learn how to do it with three digit numbers. And that's what leads to long term retention is spacing it out a little bit like that. So time and money is unit three. This is so important in second grade and so fun, right? Obviously it's really easy to explain to a kid why they need to learn about the math of money. And I don't know about you, but my kids are always so excited to learn about how to tell time because they want to know when things are happening. So I think this is gonna be a unit that you and your child loves. And then we go into the three digit numbers. The three digit number unit really parallels the two digit number unit. Um, you know, we're just building up to larger numbers now. trying to give you sort of an overall sample here. You should know that whenever I can, I add like codes and puzzles and things like that because I love them. <laughs> Kids love them too. All right, then we do measurement and data. Um, this unit is always a lot of fun to write, a lot of fun for you and your child to do, and it's so important for kids to know these skills, both in math and in science. They're learning how to measure we do standard, we do metric. And then a really fun thing with this uh, unit is uh, the project at the end has a science connection. So they start planting beans when they start this unit and then they use that to learn how to record data. And then at the end, they analyze the bean growth and they make a graph. Just so fun to apply it like that. And then of course we have geometry at the end here. And I have definitely heard that the last project of the book is very popular. This is how you're gonna end the year with a pizza party to celebrate all the work you did. But also we incorporate the math ideas from the geometry unit in making this pizza. You can enjoy your pizza and then celebrate uh, finishing the year. Now I want to show you one typical lesson so you can understand the flow of a lesson. So let's look at lesson 63. This is in the unit on money. They've already been doing some work with coins and now we're going to learn about amounts over a dollar. So the first thing they do is they play a game called spin to a dollar. So a hands-on game, lots of fun. Every lesson starts with an activity like that to get them excited and ready to learn. Then they're gonna learn the lesson part, amounts over $1, and then they're gonna practice. And sometimes it might be two pages. In this case, it's only one page because they actually did quite a bit of math in this game, even though they were you know, having fun and they probably didn't really notice, they did quite a bit of um, review there. So all the lessons follow that structure pretty much where you have an activity and then a lesson and then a practice, okay? And, they're all included in the teaching guide. So here's the answers to that lesson I just showed you. Here's notes on how to best teach it. Here's the take it further so you can make it more challenging for a child who's ready for that. So that's the flow of that. Now I wanna show you what's included in the teaching guide. Of course, you've seen the answers and the notes. We have that for every lesson. We have some other resources as well that I think are really gonna bless you. This is the pacing guide. We put this in because I need this, of course. It's a quick at a glance list of the lessons, the skills practice that you need to do with boxes to check off. So you can tell if you're 
ahead of where you need to be or behind, that type of thing, all right? You can vary from this. We did 28 weeks at a four-day week. Obviously, you can adjust that, but at least you have this in here for a quick overview. Now, I referenced the skills practice. Let me tell you what that is. If you look closely, on any given day, there's a lesson, and then there's some type of skill to review. So you're expected to spend five to 10 minutes reviewing that skill. For instance, here, you're reviewing adding two-digit numbers. So they're learning something else in the lesson, but at the same time, there's a spiral review of the skills. How do you know what to review? Well, when you get to that unit, we lay it all out for you. I explain to you the different skills that you're going to be reviewing. And then I give several suggestions for how to review it. Okay, these can be simple, like flashcards, or they can be more complicated, like games. And then you get to choose and pick what works best for your child. Finally, in the back of the teaching guide are all the tear out pages for the activities, the game boards, and those types of things. The last feature I wanna show you is the Christian element of the program, which I think is really unique. So at the beginning of each unit, I've written a short devotional connecting the content to our faith and the creator. So for instance, when they go to learn the unit on time and money, I talk about how God created the universe, God created time, and he is the one who reigns over that. And he's the one who set the sun in place so that we could keep track of the days and the moon and, and the seasons. And then we look at different ways that humans have tried to record time. And we just think about, even as we're getting ready to learn how to read a clock, God is so much greater than us and that he even created the planets and things like that to govern time.